Hi, I'm Rick McCurdy. Today I'm going to refret a 1962 Fender Stratocaster with a rosewood board. These frets are slid in from the side until 1985 and so there are some tricks to get these frets out nice and clean and leave the least amount of damage to the fingerboard. I'd like to show you some tricks that I've developed over the years to help get these frets out easy and make the guitar play better. You'll just need a couple of tools uh, to get these frets out. Uh, first thing you need is something to heat the frets up with. They've been in there for 60 years and they're really stuck. So I like to heat them up with a soldering iron and run a bead of solder on the top of each fret. Uh, then you need a metal prod or a pin to push it out with. And I just use an old screwdriver and a hammer. Once you get them out just a little bit out of the treble side, you pull it with vice grip so you cause the least amount of damage to this old fingerboard. And I've got it clamped securely to my bench with a Jorgensen clamp and a couple of clamps because the firmer it's held, the more accurate your work will be. Don't forget to push down on the fret when you're doing this to keep it from chipping. That was easy. Now repeat 20 times. Now no matter how careful you are or, or how slow you go, you still may get some chips as you pull the fret out. The most important thing is to fix these right away with super glue. I don't know if you can see these, but right here, put a little super glue on it, mash them flat with something metal, certainly don't use your finger, and the moisture from your breath kicks it off a little bit faster than uh, just letting it dry. Now wood changes shape over the years. This fingerboard was flat in 1962. But under string tension, maple really changes shape. So the secret of a great fret job is to have a flat fingerboard with the truss rod off. Uh, as you can see from this, there's no fingerboard on these real fenders. And so you can't really level the fingerboard to get the action perfectly right. So what I'm doing is I'm putting on slightly oversized frets and then leveling the frets to get the fingerboard path perfectly flat. Uh, for those of you guys who have not seen or used one of these Earl Wine neck jigs, uh, it, there's nothing very tricky about it at all. There's no springs or anything like that. It just holds the neck in its rest position so when you lean on it with a file or with sandpaper, it doesn't bend. It holds it in its natural position so you can work on it and figure out where the high spots are and so on and so forth. Like I said, I've done this with wedges and a clamp on a bench for many years and had equal results. Now this fingerboard was very dry and so I did get some little chips at the edge. So what I did was I ran a bead of super glue down each side of each slot. Now I'm going to take a 400 sandpaper on a hard block and I'm going to knock those down. Also there's a lot of gunk on the fingerboard because hey, this thing's been played for 60 years. So I'm just really going to clean and uh, level these little bumps out. Twelve inch block, three twenty wet and uh, three twenty sandpaper. It can be wet and dry. I'm just using this white stuff because I got a bunch of it. Now I've sanded the fingerboard and I'm going to check the arc of the fingerboard. I've put a light behind it, I'm going to use a straight edge. Use it in three places. 
once right down the middle and if you look very carefully you can see a gap see the light under there okay and we do three places in the middle on the high E and on the low E and you gotta make sure that you got the straight edge positioned right on this thing you want to make sure this gap at the seventh fret is the same for all the three spaces this one is actually pretty good so we're going to leave it and we'll do any correction, like I said, with the frets. All right, the fingerboard is all prepped. I've sanded it 320, then 600 on a hard block and uh, filled in all the chips with super glue. Now I've got to cut all the slots to the correct depth. To cut the fret slots on the fender neck to the equal depth, you need a saw that has a stop built in. Now you can build this one, which I made from plexiglass, which has, a, uh, has an X-Acto saw blade and it protrudes 1 16th of an inch. This is a very narrow blade. This is like 19 thousandths. Or you can buy one from a Luthier's Mercantile or this is a Stewie Mac and it's got a little stop built on it and then it's set to a 1 16th. Now the trick with this is not to make the slots too wide and then the fret doesn't grip as well and you don't get as good a fret job. So making a dedicated tool for this is a very good idea. Try to keep it square. Now that we've got the fret slots all cut to the right depth, we want to camfer the top edge of the fret slot a little bit. When they make fret wire, here's a little piece of what I'm going to be putting on there. When they make fret wire, they shoot it through a die. It's called extruded. And so this little T part where the tang meets the top is not perfectly right angle. It's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more material in there. So we want to relieve the, just the inside of the, uh, of the slot just at the top. So this thing will sit hard on the fingerboard all the way down on the rosewood and that just makes the guitar sing. So here's our standard fret wire uh, 80 thousandths wide which is uh, the original fender wire from 62. I'm going to clean this with naphtha which is also lighter fluid uh, just because you uh, use a little oil in the machining process and you got to get your thumb in there and get into the tang and you can see ooh, this one's pretty clean but you can see the oil in there and this will help it once again really get a good grip on it see how dirty it is and once I do this then I'm going to run it through and re-arc it now the best way to deal with fret wire is to over bend it so the tips of the frets go in first and then you pound the center down this really locks it in. So now I'm going to overbend it from this radius. It came from factory this way. And give it a little bit more, see, a little bit finer. Alright. Another good tip is the end of this, because of the way it's going through the machine, is not bent to the same arc as everything else. So you've got to cut an inch off each end. These are seemed like little things, but a fret job can really improve the guitar and make it better than original. You see that this is not in the same arc as this, so you just want to cut about this much off the end. So I've slightly overbent this for a slightly tighter radius. You can see a little bit of light underneath it like this, and that'll really help it sit right. 